Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo982 and today we are back for another brand new video. Today's video is going to be a little bit different than normal, however in the past we have discussed Scottish football as a whole and obviously the international team as well which has been fun. And if I'm honest with you, there's a discussion happening right now in Scottish football that I just want to ask your opinions on so we can use this channel just to get our voices out there to discuss with each other because obviously it involves Rangers but it involves every single team in the league. Now just in case that deliciously clickbaity tilt hasn't spoiled tonight's topic or explained what it actually is, we're going to be discussing fan behaviour slash punishments that's been affecting games throughout the entire season in Scottish football. Now I'm saying fans because I think if you go out here and you do these stupid things that we're going to be talking about in tonight's video, you're not really a football fan, you're just being a fanny and you just want to make it all about you rather than the football the way it should be. Which is honestly a shame because you think of it at Scottish football, I think personally this year has just got better from it has been in a very long time. I think there's six or seven very good teams in the league and even the ones below that have certain strengths like Livingston's very, very good at home and then you've got other teams that's good away from home. On the field that's actually on the up but you don't hear anything, we're not discussing on the field Scottish football, we're still considered tin pot because all the events that's happening on the field are being overshadowed by fannies off of it. If you take a step back and you look at this season alone, just this season, which have not even finished by the way, we've just reached the split. There's been headlines for racist chants aimed at players, there's been objects thrown at linesmen, officials and even fourth officials at the sideline. There's been a players literally run and hover a swing like that arsehole who jumped on the field versus the Rangers Hibs game and had a swing at Tavernier. It's absolutely madness and it's clearly overshadowing the football that's actually happening. I mean, no wonder any good players actually want to come up to Scotland or nay investors want to invest in Scotland because this is their portfolio. This is what they're seeing. You type in Scottish football, all you're seeing is negative headline, negative headline, negative headline, negative headline. That is all there is about Scottish football and it's these idiots, these individuals of the football teams ruining it for everyone. And there's also one other thing that's been dominating Scottish football. It is the sectarian abuse as well. Now I've made a video about this before expressing my displeasure at the way that the media represents one side of it where it's serious and needs to be seriously tackled and then the other ones laughed at like Andy Walker could say oh look at Chris Boyd, he loves it doesn't he? I think that's honestly disgusting and I've already shared my thoughts and opinions on that but that continues even today in the Aberdeen Celtic uh, semi-final in the cup Derek McInnes was sent off because he reacted to the Celtic fans singing sectarian songs. Now as you know I've already had my say on this subject I don't think it's ever going to fix itself within the Scottish game when you've got pundits, media outlets making one more important than the other but the fact remains all of these topics that we have discussed has dominated Scottish football negatively this season and this is where the discussions actually coming from from even politicians are now getting involved. What can we do to actually tackle this and stop this from happening and stop it from negatively affecting Scottish football in the future? Now this is the part of the video where the discussion really kicks into gear and I want you guys to get your thoughts and opinions out there because as already mentioned the SFA, the government, the, the politicians, the police and even the players are all getting together and they've sort of narrowed down four ways of punishment to try and stop this behaviour and I just want to know which one you would think would work at your best so let's break them down then shall we? The first one would be one that's been happening all season long which is banning the individual who's been involved in the incident from any stadium in Scotland. The second one is a bit of a newer one, it's apparently going to be taking place very soon in Scottish football which is going to be closing whatever stand the incident actually took place and so not only are you punishing the individual with a ban but you're also closing that entire section as a warning to others. Third one is jailing the individual and also supplying them with a hefty hefty fine just to scare off anyone from doing it again. And the fourth and final one is obviously going to be the massive one, docking points from which Ever club is actually associated with the incident so if it's at a home game and a home fan does anything that will be the team that gets dock points but if it's a away fan obviously that's the way it'll go as well. Now truth be told the banning is still actually eligible in all three of them like it's still being discussed that if you do go to jail you'll be banned when you come out of it if the stand gets closed you're going to get banned and obviously if you get the club dock points you will be banned but I don't think banning is just enough because we've seen it all season long how many times has a certain individual been banned but it continues to happen in the next game or the next game or the game after that. Banning is just not enough anymore. People will find ways ruin the ban. It's pretty easy. Because let's be fair, let's say someone got banned watching a game of football. Let's just say they went up to Aberdeen and they watched Sun and they got banned from there, right? What's to stop them to go in any other stadium in Scotland and just watching a game of football there? Or watching them whenever his team is playing 
away from home. Is that team going to have pictures of that individual who's banned and they're going to search everyone that's coming in for tickets, pulling their scarf down, taking their hats off and checking to make sure it's no him? That is highly, highly doubtful. And the last thing we'll say about the banning, by the way, very briefly, is we've already mentioned the idiot that ran on the park versus the Hibs and Rangers game and got involved in the scuffle with Tavernier. What happened to him? He got banned. Now, there was no incidents of another player running on the park and getting involved, but there have been other incidents of objects thrown, etc. since that, so it's not really deterred anyone. If you actually compare it to an incident down south that happened a day later in the Aston Villa-Birmingham City game, an idiot ran on the park and attacked one of these players, he received jail time, and have you seen any other incidents involving Aston Villa or even Birmingham City since then? Nope. But that's just the first one. I want to know what your thoughts are. Which one do you think is better? Do you even disagree with me about banning? Do you think that's the best way to go? Again, there's no right or wrong answers. Let me know your thoughts and opinions out there. I'm just going to give you mine. And if I'm honest with you, the second one is backed quite heavily by a lot of people, which is obviously closing down the stand that was involved in the incident. And I can understand why, because let's say you're standing and you're throwing objects or you're shouting a certain thing that you shouldn't be shouting. If that's in danger of closing that entire stand where other boys are season ticket holders or sitting there watching their team, they want to go and watch their team every week, you're going to get shut down very, very quickly if it's going to impact that entire row. So I completely understand that. That kind of allows the fans to police themselves in a way. On the flip side of that, someone that's five, six, seven, eight, nine rows away to the right hand side, should they lose out because of one idiot's decision? For me, I still think it's very, very harsh to close down an entire stand because of one fanny selfishness. Now the docking points argument is obviously the most severe and pundits and politicians like to throw that out there like it's actually gonna happen, but it was actually discussed on PLZ Zocker with Gordon Smith just a couple of days ago as well, and he was talking about the positives and the benefits of sort of enforcing that and docking points if a fan or an individual acts out. Now to be fair, I completely understand why that one's so popular because let's be fair, who's gonna buy a ticket and who's gonna go and support their team and create a scene or do anything stupid that's going to negatively impact the club. I don't think many would actually do that, especially when it's going to cost three points. What fan would do that? However, my mind instantly went to someone that's not a fan of that club. Maybe a rival fan going to games, buying a ticket and just creating a scene so that team drops points. For me, I can genuinely see fannies being that motivated, that filled with hatred to go and do that and just cost another team three points. So for me personally, I don't think docking points would be a positive thing for Scottish football, especially on the first warning. I mean, maybe a free strike rule, you get warned with two other things and the third and final one is the docking points. That one, fair enough. If a club's been warned three times, and they haven't stepped up their security, they haven't got better security cameras by that time, it's still happening. Fair enough, but Jesus, you can't jump straight to docking point, surely. You can't blame a club or an entire fan base because of a couple of idiots' decisions. So for me, it only leaves one other alternative and the best way to eradicate the, the fans' behaviour in Scottish football, in my personal opinion, again, this is just my opinion, I'm not trying to sway you or anything like that, it has to be the jail time slash the fine route. And I know some people are probably going to jump in and say, aye, but prisons and jails in Scotland are already overcrowded, it will never happen. Fine. Give them community service, but also supply them with a 20 grand fine. If I hear someone's getting fined 20 grand, am I going to be a fan of football next time? No chance, because I've not got 20k in the bank. Have you? I think that would eradicate it very, very quickly. That way, the, the, the punishment is just for the person who done the incident. It's not punishing the club. It's not punishing other innocent fans. You're not blasting an entire fan base. You're punishing the individual and I genuinely think that's the best way to eradicate it from Scottish football but again that is just my personal opinion if you haven't got your opinion out there get it down in the comments section below that is why the channel exists now obviously I asked Twitter the exact same question so let's jump to the people and hear what they've had to say so over to Twitter then 898 votes thank you so much for getting involved 5% votes for close the stand down 13% votes for dot points from the club involved 35% of the votes goes for banned for life, but the best way, according to Twitter, from 898 votes would be the fine slash jail the individual involved. Finally, we finally agree on a poll, lads. This is it. So let's actually hear what the people's had to say. Linda writes in, it's a hard one. First, let's deal with the culprit. But if the incident keeps happening from the same part of the stadium, the club has to then look at it. Niall writes in, clubs need to be ordered to get state-of-the-art CCTV so individuals can be found. That's paramount and embarrassingly short in Scottish football. Yeah, there shouldn't be any of that excuse being like, we couldn't have picked them out or CCTV couldn't have picked them up. That needs to be prioritised, especially going into next season when these incidents just continue to happen. That, that excuse 
can it continue to fly? The next one comes up from the rake, and he writes in an escalation process of all four. Fine and life back. Flash jail, then a portion of the stand, and then if it continues to go there, you get dock points. That's a very, very popular option, and I fully, fully agree. And the last two or three the watch read out in tonight's video. The first one comes in from Angus, and he writes, Club accountability is the only way to stop it. Do you really expect clubs to spend any money and take any precautions uh, to prevent it when it'll only be the individual who takes the actual punishment? I mean, that's fair, mate. If the club's getting punished, I'm sure they'll step in and actually get state-of-the-art CCTV. I didn't think of that. It's a good shout, mate. And the last one we'll actually do, just to make it fair, I'll go all the way up there, all the way down there, and we'll stop it right there. It comes from Jared Ledrum. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but he says, I've gone for fine slash jail. Only real punishment which I see putting people off. Docking points is a ridiculous idea. Not the club's fault if a fan causes trouble and there's nothing stopping rival fans causing any trouble at the opposition ground to get them docked points. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. You've heard from the people. You've heard from myself. If you haven't done so already, make sure you be getting involved down in the comments section below. And as always, just a friendly reminder, we are involved in a charity football match in June the 8th raising money for Sam H charity which is obviously a suicide prevention and a mental health charity in Scotland. We raised over 3,500 last year and we want to go ahead and do it even better this year to try and help as many people as possible so if you're free June the 8th and you want to come and watch a good little football game or we'll certainly try, the link for that is down in the description below and as always if you'd like to join the Patreon account the link is under the charity tickets. I've been CJ92, thank you so much for watching and bye.